talking about vision, I want to read a scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, starting in verse 7. It's really the verse the Lord put in my heart. It says, we walk by faith, not by? We walk by faith, not by? We walk by faith and not by? Okay, there it was. We walk by faith and not by sight. It's a, it's a famous scripture, but it's interesting because we're talking about vision and how God wants us to have vision. The scripture here says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, wait a second. I thought vision was sight. Well, really, the, the, the concept of godly vision is not necessarily in our sight in what we see here, but it's seeing through the lens of faith, that I'm going to believe by faith. I'm going to see through faith that what God is calling me to and who God is calling me to be, not what I see in my surroundings. Because y'all know sometimes we see in our surroundings ain't nothing to do with what God's trying to show us in our hearts and what we're believing for by faith. Amen, somebody. Amen. So we're going to be talking about this. And we're just really, what does it look like to really walk by faith and not by sight? Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 19, 18, excuse me, says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, people perish. It's interesting because this text, what does it mean? It doesn't mean if you don't have a vision, you just die off. But really what it means is that if you have no vision in your life, you're going to end up wandering. You're going to end up just, just kind of just, just going through life, hoping for the best, hoping the right things happen and hoping for the, for the things that you may want when really it, God is wanting us to have a vision. Why? Because it allows us to pursue the things that he wants in our lives for us. And it's so important that we read this in Habakkuk chapter two in verse two it says and the lord answered write the vision make it plain on tablets so that he may run who reads it for still the vision awaits its appointed time it hastens to end to the end and it will not lie it is if it seems slow wait for it it will surely come it will not delay the scripture says write the vision and make it plain and so then it says, I love it. It doesn't just say write the vision and make it plain. It says, and then for the person that's going to run, when they read it, they'll run because they know this is what God has called me to. And this is what I believe as we get into 2024, what God is challenging us with. Okay, God, as we, as we pursue you, as we seek you, God, that you would give us a vision for our lives that can help us really run and be who you've called us to be. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Beginning scripture of the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, the scripture says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Then it says that the earth was without form and void. And then it says, I love it, that the Holy Spirit was, was hovering over the face of the waters. I want to talk to you today as we're talking about vision. My title today, if you're taking notes, if not, no worries. But if you're taking notes, I want to talk to you about embracing the void. Embracing the void, how God is calling us. And this is what the Lord was speaking to me about. As we have vision that he's calling us to, that we would embrace the void. The scripture says that we just read, in the beginning, God. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, in the beginning, God. What does this show us? It shows me this, that, it, that vision starts with God. Godly vision starts with God. Healthy vision starts with God. We can have all our own visions and all our own dreams and all our own agendas, but the scripture says, I love it in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse nine, that as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. God is speaking. He says, my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. We understand that vision, godly vision starts with, with God. And so this is why as a church, as believers, we're doing this 21 days of prayer and fasting. We're not doing 21 days of prayer and fasting so we can just give ourselves something else to do for the next 21 days. We're not doing it so we could just lose some weight. Come on, somebody. We're not doing it just because we know we've been eating too many donuts. We're doing this because these 21 days of prayer and fasting, because what happens is prayer is us connecting to God and fasting is us disconnecting from the world. And so here's what we're doing. We're taking 21 days and saying, okay, God, what is the vision that you have for my life? God, I have all these dreams. I have all these agendas. I have all these visions for myself and that's great. But here's the thing, God, what is it that you want for my life? What is it that you want? 
in, a, in my marriage? What is it that you want in my workplace? Because y'all know we'd be wanting some stuff at work. We'd be wanting the promotions and we'd be wanting the, the raises and we'd be wanting that extra cash. Come on, somebody, we'd be looking for that bonus and then somebody else gets it and you're like, God, where are you? But what, sh could we take a moment and say, God, what is it that you want for my life? Because if we just pursue our own vision, it's gonna lead to destruction because we in our own selves, y'all know, we stupid. Just me, okay. I'll be the first to admit, I ain't the smartest. So what do we do? We say, okay, God, what do you want for my life? What's, the, what's your vision? I know your ways are higher than my ways. So God, what do you want for my life? And so this is what we're doing. We're taking 21 days and say, okay, God, I wanna connect with you, but I also wanna disconnect from the world, from the other frequencies, the voices of the world so that I can clearly hear you. When I was growing up, I'm gonna show my age a little bit, but it's okay. When I was growing up, uh, we didn't have iPhones that had the, the, on the tip of the finger, you could listen to any song on, you could possibly think of. And we didn't have all these different apps that did up different ones. We didn't have the arguments of Apple Music or Spotify, come on somebody. We didn't, and you know, you, you, you judge the other if you are the other, you know what I'm saying? We didn't have all this. Here's what we had when I was a kid growing up. We had boom boxes. Come on somebody. And it, when I'm going to tell you about a boombox, let me tell you about a boombox. It wasn't even at the point where we had CDs yet. We had tape cassettes. Now, some of y'all young people, you don't even know what a tape cassette is. You think it's retro. No, it's not. <laughs> and so we had boomboxes and we had tape cassettes and we had radios that you would have to dial in the frequency of what, the, what, what channel you wanted to listen to. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If you don't, let me show you the frequency. Let me show you a boombox. You got a picture of it. There it is. Now, some of y'all are like, ooh, I saw that in a museum. No, you didn't. No, you did not. I am not that old. But what would happen, the craziest thing, for those of you that have worked with this in fine, incredible piece of machinery, you would have a radio station that was like 99.6. And you'd be like, hey, I want to listen and see what the weather is going to be like today. We didn't have an app where you could just type the weather and boom, you find out what the temperature was. No, you had to either watch the TV or you had to listen to the radio. And so we would put on the radio 99.6. And so you'd look, just dial it in and make sure it's right in between 99 and 100. And then, okay, we got it. And the little guy comes on, he's like, and the weather today. It looks like it's going to be 75 degrees, partly cloudy, but pretty nice. And you're like, okay, good. Well, here was the thing. For those of you that had these radios, and if you didn't, I'm going to explain. What would happen sometimes is if you was like 99.6, you would like get it to like 99.4 or 0.5, and you could hear, it's going to be 75 degrees, partly cloudy. But what would happen sometimes, y'all remember this, some of y'all, is you could also hear another channel at the same time. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It was like, it's going to be 75 degrees, partly cloudy. And all of a sudden you hear, I don't want no scrub. Scrub's going to be a hell. Can't get no love from me. Hanging out the passenger side. Best friends ride. Trying to. <laughs> and so all of a sudden you just forget about the weather. You bang. You're like. Yeah, I don't want, no, it's good. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Don't let 90s music come on. I'll be, I'll, I'll be shaking it, you know what I'm saying? I go to BC, you know what I'm saying? Before Christ, you know what I'm saying? Okay, that was a, okay, it doesn't matter. And it's interesting that you could hear two things at the same time and it would get to the point where you're distracted on what it was. It's the same thing with our spiritual walk. That we can be wanting to hear from God and wanting to get vision from God, knowing that his ways are higher than our ways. But we can have so many different frequencies going on and even our own frequencies and our own thought processes and all these different things. And so then, now we don't know where to go. We don't know what the vision is. We don't know what we should be writing down because all these other people and all these things and all of our feelings are all telling us different things. This is why one of the incredible things that, of why we pray and fast. So we can disconnect and we can say, okay, God, I wanna hear and line up and in tune, be in tune with your frequency so that I can see vision and hear vision and hear your voice for my life and what you want from me, and who you are calling me to be. Because I'm telling you this, I believe this, 
that if we just allow ourselves to just listen to every frequency that's out there, we're never gonna have true vision because we'll be so distracted on which vision to go, we'll never move. And so I believe this is God's calling us as a church. This is why we're doing it, calling you as a church, calling us together, not just the pastor, not just the leaders, not just the small group leaders, all of us to say, hey, I wanna challenge myself let me take some time to pray and fast. Now, let me say this. It, Jesus, when he prayed and fast, fasted, he went into the wilderness, and then he also went without food. So two different types of fast. A, he went into the wilderness. He fasted. He got away from the world. So people were like, oh, I want to fast social networks. Totally fine. That's a great fast. But he also fasted without food. And so I would tell you, I would challenge you, totally fine if you want to fast social networks. But I would tell you, you need to fast. That's a mental fast. I'm fasting. I'm getting a break from what the world may be doing or saying or me just scrolling. But also, you need to physically fast. Why? Because it's a challenge of your flesh. flesh and so what is God asking you to give up as far as food? It doesn't have to be all meals. That's not what we're saying. If you want it to be all meals, God bless you. But that's not what we're talking about. It's like, hey, you know what? Maybe I want to give up lunch or I want to give up sweets or I want to give up, I want to give up, uh, I want to do the Daniel fast. If you don't know about the Daniel fast, you can look it up. It's, it's pretty much all veggies and hey, whatever you may want to do, but it's you saying, okay, I want to get a mental break. Yes, but I also want to take a physical disconnect and I want to die to my own flesh so that I can continue to hear God's voice and not my own. Does that make sense? So important you understand this. And so this is why we're doing this. And so I want to challenge you more than ever before. I'm challenging our church. I want everybody if you are physically able to, if you're not physically able, then, then don't do it. But if you are physically able, I would challenge you to ask God, what can you give up for the next 21 days? Why? Because I want our church to be on the frequency of what God is asking and wanting us to do as individuals and as a church. And we are the body. So if you're lacking, we're all lacking. If you're struggling, we're all struggling. If you're close, we're all getting closer. Does that make sense? As we take this time of this 21 days, it's not just another spiritual thing we can do. It's not just another, oh, we're just, we're just gonna do another, it's another spiritual discipline because they want me to be a better Christian. That's not at all. Fasting is not to be, to be better or to get better. Let me say it this way. Fasting is not to get better. Fasting is to get closer. I'm letting go and so that I can draw closer to the Lord to hear his voice. Why? Because I want vision for my life. I want his ways. I don't want my ways. I want his thoughts. I don't want my thoughts. I want his agenda, not my agenda. Why? Because his leads to life. Mine leads to destruction. Genesis chapter one and verse two. I love it. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then the earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. Vision is birthed in the void. Vision is birthed in the void. Check this out. The earth was without form. It's without void. Then God decides, I want to create the world. In the void allowed God to choose to now be creative. It's the same thing with you and I. Here's what I love. In the void, oftentimes we look at our lives, and let's say the void, the things that maybe are challenges in our lives, things that maybe are not the way that we want them to be, things that are lacking, if you will. The, the, the earth was without form. It was in void. It was in lack. It did not exist. So things in our lives that may be lacking, oftentimes what we do is we want to ignore those, and we want to work on the things that we're good at. We want to say, oh, well, no, I, you know, it, it's just one of those things. That's just who I am, or that's just some of the things I'm working through, or that's just my personality, or, or, or that's just the way our marriage is, or, or that's just the way I, I act at work, or I, it's just me. And so then that's just the void. That's what it is. And so then God, okay, give me vision now for my future. And we think that's what vision is. But in fact, the scripture says that when it was in void, then God got the vision. God says, okay, let me create the world. See, in void, God desires and challenges and struggles and, and, and lack. God desires to create vision in our lives. It's interesting that the void is actually what brought creativity. Could it be that the things that we lack 
in our lives or the things that God wants to use and bring creativity in us to bring us out of that lack? Could it be that your marriage, if there's lack in an area of your marriage, we just say, oh, that's just our marriage. We just been married for 10 years or five years or 20 years or 30 years or one year. That's just kind of what it is. It's just part of our relationship. We just kind of, it's just, it's, but there's some lack. And I know it could be better, but it's all good. Could it be that that lack is actually where God wants to give you vision to get you to be creative, to get you past the very things that you're struggling in? Could it be with your own personal walk with God? Because this is what we do. Oh yeah, you know, I just struggle reading the Bible or, you know, I just I haven't been praying as much as I should. And I really, in 2024, I wanna, I wanna be one that reads the Bible and I wanna be one that prays. That's great. You see the need, that's great. But here's what we need to do. We need to get creative in our own hearts and ask the Holy Spirit, okay, how can I creatively walk out and get the vision you want for me to really be the person and do the things you're calling me to do? Do you know that 91%, I just heard this this week, that 91% of New Year's resolutions, people quit. 91% of the people that create New Year's resolutions don't finish at the end of the year. Did you know that 23% of those people don't make it by week one? That's a quarter of this room. Some of y'all ate the donuts when you shouldn't have. Come on, somebody. They say 43% don't make it by the end of January. What does this show me? It shows me that it's just us just wanting to do something because we want to, we want to be better. We're going to end up just letting go of it. But here's what I love in the void and the lack. Instead of just saying, okay, it's something we want to do. No, God, give me a vision for it. Let me get creative on how to remove or get myself out of this situation. I love it. 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 That it wasn't like everything was great. And then God was get, said, let's, make create, let's be creative. No, it was in the void. He said, okay, now we got to get creative. Why? Because I have a vision. Here's the vision. I see it as it could be, not as it is. In your marriage, it's not, I see it as it is. Oh, we've been struggling and oh, we've been fighting and oh, we just kind of disconnecting a lot and oh, we're not as close as we once were and oh, we're not as in love as we once were. I don't see it as it is. That's not vision. That's walking by sight. I'm walking by faith. I'm seeing it as it could be. Now, what does that mean? Now, I have to get creative on saying, okay, I see it as it could be. Now, God, give me creative areas of my life to help me walk out what you're calling me to do to get me to the destination and where I, we desire to go in our marriage and your friendships and your relationships at your workplace. Because y'all know, y'all be seeing work as it is. Y'all know what I'm saying. Ooh, we, they, they, Monday morning comes, you feeling all refreshed from Sunday. Monday morning comes, you know who it is. She says, or he says one thing, and oh, you back in, oh, let's rock and roll. It's always gonna be like this. I'm always gonna get thrown under the bus. I'm never gonna get the promotion. I'm never gonna be financially uh, stable or I'm never gonna be out, out of debt or whatever it may be. And we're seeing things as it is. But God, I love it. He sees in the void and he says, I wanna get creative in the void and bring life through the void. It's the same thing with you and I. If we need to embrace the void, we don't even need to ignore it. Here's the question I would ask you. This is what we ask ourselves. Where's, your, where's the lack in your life? Where's the lack in your marriage? Because here's what I know. If you can't see it, you're like, oh, we got a perfect marriage. Well, there's your void. <laughs> where's, the, where's the void in your relationship with God? Oh, I'm, I'm a strong believer. Oh man, I'm, me and Jesus, we're like, we're neck and neck. We're close. Well, if you and Jesus are neck and neck, you got real pride. You got, we got we to get you and get some counseling. You know what I'm saying? Where's the void in your relationship with God? Where's the void in your home? Where's the void in your friendships? Because here's what I know. If we just hope for the best and we just hope our lives are gonna be better and we just hope that our relationship with God's gonna be closer, because every one of us, we could have conversations. I know we could. Every single one of us could have conversations and every single one of us would say, man, I just wanna, in 2024, I wanna be closer to the Lord. Every single one of us. That's great. That's incredible. But here's the question. Where's the lack that's keeping you from that? 
Because where you see the lack, that's where then God wants to bring the Holy Spirit. I love it. The Holy Spirit was hovering over the waters. He was waiting to activate. It's the same thing with you and I. Where's the lack? Why? Because the Holy Spirit's waiting on us so that he can help us get creative to get us to the place of where we desire and where God desires for us to be in our future in these areas of our lives. It's so important that we understand this as we continue to grow, that he sees it not as it is, but as it could be. And here's the question. It doesn't always have to be bad. It doesn't say that God looked down at the earth and it was without form and void, and he thought, this is terrible. It doesn't always have to be bad. Here's the question. What could be better? How could your relationships be better? How could your relationship with God be better? How could you, how at your workplace, how could it be better? God, now help me to creatively process this so you can help me give me the vision and what you're calling me to do and be in this area of my life. Does that make sense? Back in chapter, chapter two and verse two, it says, and the Lord answered, write the vision down and make it plain on tablets so that he may run who reads it. Write the vision down, make it plain, make it simple. Then what I want you to do, I want you to make it plain. Why? Because so the person who reads it can run, can do what it is that it says. I love it that God, he, in the beginning, he's the one that has vision. I love that he created out of the void. But then I love it didn't just stop. He didn't just say, okay, I got some great ideas. Then the Bible says that God went to work. The scripture says in Genesis chapter one and verse three, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. This was day one of creation. Genesis chapter one and verse six, then God said, let there be space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And this is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters from the earth from the waters of the heavens. And God called the space sky. That was the end of day two. Chapter 1, verse 9, then God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together in one place, so dry ground may appear. And this is what happened. God called the dry ground land, and the waters cease. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land sprout with vegetation, every sort of seed-bearing plant and trees that grow, seed-bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. And that is what happened. This ended day three. Then in verse 14, it says, then God said, let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs of that mark the seasons, days, and years. Let there be lights in the sky shine down on the earth. And this is what happened. God made two great lights, the larger one to govern the day and the smaller one to govern the night. He also made stars. This ended day four. This ended day four. I'm just making sure you're listening. Okay. Verse 20, then God said, let the, lights, let the waters swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. So God created sea creatures and every living thing that scurries and swarms in the water and every sort of bird, each producing offspring of the, offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. This ended day so in the day five, then Genesis chapter one, verse 24, then God said, let the earth produce every sort of animal, every producing offspring of the same kind, life spring, small animals that scurry along the ground and wild animals. And this is what happened in verse 26. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us, that will reign over the fish and the sea and the birds in the sky and the livestock and the wild animals on the earth and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image in the image of God. God created them male and female. He created them day six. <sighs> I'm tired just reading this. Isn't it interesting that the God of the universe took six days to create the earth? Here's the question I had to ask. Could not God create the whole thing in one snap? Could not God have just said, let it exist? Boom, here it all is. Why would it take or why would God take six days? Let me show you why. I believe because he wants us to understand that vision takes work. See, I love it. It's not just have a vision. It's now go to work on what that vision is. Go to God. We seek God. God, what is it that you're, what is your way? What is your, what is your thoughts? God, I want what you want from me. I want your agenda. I want your ways. Okay, God gives us an idea then, or he shows us the void. And then from there, we get creative. And now we go to work to see that process come to pass. See, I believe this, that no vision without work 
will ever come to pass. And what is the work? Let me explain. It's the process. God had a process for six days. He created the earth. He had a process in how he did that. Our process is what leads us to the destination and where we desire to go. So here's the question. What is the process of your vision? God, what is the vision? Where's the void? I see there's a void. Okay, I know I gotta get creative in that. Okay, creativity is now the process that puts me to work to reach what it is that I'm wanting in my life. Because here's what I know. A vision without a process is just a fantasy. You can want a good marriage for the rest of your life. You don't ever put anything in a process. Let me tell you something. Your marriage is going to be terrible. You can want to live pure in your life if you're single. You can want to, you can say, hey, I'm going to wait till I'm married. I'm going to wait till I find the right boo-boo. You know, I'm going to wait. I got it. But if you don't put a process in how you're going to do that, it's never going to come to pass. You have to put a process down into what you desire to do or become based on who God is asking you and what he's telling you to do. What's the process? I love it. Habakkuk, we just read it. Write the vision down. And make it plain. The process is written down, meaning this. I know the vision. I remember the vision. Okay? I write it down. I know the vision. And then I'm going to make it plain. It's so simple. It's so practical. I want to be closer to God this year. That's incredible. I'm so proud of you. I could give you 50 quick practical things you could do. One, maybe you set up a time. You say, every day I'm going to read the Bible. Maybe you set up a time. Every day I'm going to pray at this time. Maybe you say, you know what? This year I'm committing to come to church every week. Is Unless I'm out of town. Come on, somebody. I'm just preaching to myself, I guess. It's okay. And so here, here's what it is. I'm going to commit to a small group. I want to be closer to God. It's interesting. We want these things, but really they're just fantasies because we don't want to put in the work. Is this okay? Yeah. We want a good marriage. Okay, that's great. I can give you practical tips. You want to live pure. You want to live on fire for Jesus. All those things are great. But what is the process that's getting you to that place? Because if you don't have a process, you ain't going. I promise you, if you don't have a process at the end of this year, your marriage, your life, your relationship with Jesus is going to look exactly the same because what you always did is always going to be the outcome of what you get. Man, I'm preaching up here. Come on, somebody. Bless your brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's interesting because just recently... Uh, during over Christmas break uh, in Orlando. Some of you probably know, some of you don't. If you have children, you definitely know. But we went to a, a place called Pepper World. Okay, if you've never been to Pepper World, don't worry about it. If you don't know what Pepper World is, bless you, okay? <laughs> we went to Pepper World, Pepper Land, whatever you want to call it. And here's what happens. Uh, no, no kidding. We typed in the GPS, Pepper Land, okay? And here's the thing about the GPS. The GPS didn't say, when you see a sign, turn. The GPS doesn't say, when you feel like you're close enough, then make a right. The GPS doesn't say, when you're feeling pretty good, then you, when, you, when you're not hungry anymore, and just, then you just kind of figure out. No, the GPS gives us, so interesting, the GPS gives us a step-by-step -step process to get us to the destination of where we're trying to go, which was Pepper World. Now, here's what's interesting. For most of us, if we're not from the area, we quickly type in the GPS and we know we trust the process, the step-by-step, -step, and it's very practical. It says, turn left. So what do you do? Most of the time, some of y'all, you just miss it, but that's okay. You turn left. Some of y'all, you're like, oh, I thought it was the next left. You ain't paying attention. It's okay. But it's interesting. It gives you a step-by-step -step process, and then you end up in the destination. And here's what's interesting. You don't go, oh, we got here. There's the pig. I can't believe it. I didn't look at Ashley and say, wow, we made it. No, I knew the process would take me to the destination of where I was trying to go. It's the same thing with our visions. The process, if you are faithful and consistent to, you, to it, will bring you to the destination where you're trying to go in your marriage, in your relationship with God, 
in your process of with your, in your workplace, in your, in your friendships. It will bring you to the place, but you have to be creative enough to be, say, I wanna put it in the process, but then I'm willing to put in the work. Interesting, it took him six days. It wasn't instant. It didn't happen overnight. This is where a lot of times we get stuck and we lose motivation. We lose motivation and we lose passion because it's not happening the way we think it should. The marriage or the friendships or the relationships aren't coming the way that we thought they would. And so we're like, oh, we've been trying. We've, been, we've had the vision and we've been, we've been pursuing him and we're not, we're not seeing the results. Well, we have to, you have to understand God multiple times stopped on a day one or day three or day five and it's, he sits back and he says, it's good. But just because he was, it was good didn't mean he was done. And so here's what he did. He continued in the process. And then from the process, understanding it sometimes takes time. And so we have to be patient. And a lot of times, this is where we lose the motivation. We get fired up in the new year. I'm going to read the Bible in a year. We get fired up. I'm going I'm to go, commit to coming to church every week. I'm going to go to a small. We get fired up. And then what happens is week three, we're like, man, I'm so tired. You, I, I'm going to work on my marriage. I'm going to serve first. I'm going to choose them over myself. Day one, you get up, you cook them a little bit of breakfast. Come on, somebody, their favorite meal. You bring it to them in bed. You're so hyped. And then day two comes around. You're like, this is exhausting. Where's my breakfast? It's not overnight. Jesus is not a microwave. You can tweet me on that. <laughs> Jesus is not a microwave. Let me explain why Jesus is not a microwave. Because anything that comes out of the microwave ain't healthy for you. Come on. There's a process that God makes us wait. Why? Because what he has is more healthy than the instant. And so we have to be willing to put in the process and be patient and wait. And here's what happens. When God is ready, as we continue to be consistent in doing the work, God will come to pass in his timing, not ours. Why? Because his ways are better than our ways. I'm closing, I promise. Genesis chapter two and verse one. Genesis chapter two and verse one. So the creation of heavens and the earth and everything in them was complete. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation and he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. Interesting. Six days he works. It starts with a vision from him. He sees a void. He says, let's, let's create something. From the void, God creates life. He goes to work. He works, and as he works, he realizes it's not instant. It's a six-day process for him. For some of us, it would be a 600-year forever process, but he goes to work. And then, I love it, on the seventh day, the Bible says he looks back, and it's been completed. On the end of day six, he says it is good. He sits back, and he rests. What does this show us? It shows us that vision leads to fullness. Vision leads to fullness. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His way, he leads us to life and life more abundantly, to fullness in your marriage. I love it that he sits back. Oh my gosh, I, I, I love it. I, I, one day I hope that we have movie reels that God will show us in heaven what it was like on day seven. I'm sure he sat back and he's going, it's good. Can I tell you that's God's heart for your life? Can I tell you that God wants to sit back at the end of 2024 and go, our relationship with each other is good. Can I tell you that he wants to sit back and he wants you to sit back in 2024 and go, man, my relationship with spouse is good. My relationship with my friends are good. My relationship with God is so healthy. Oh, my relationship at work, it's not perfect, but man, it's so good. Can I tell you that this is the vision I believe God wants for us, that we would look back and say, it's good. But in order to get there, the question we have to ask ourselves is this. God, what do you want? God, what's your vision for my life? God, where do you want me? God, what do you want me to do? 
God, where's the void? Where's the lack? Holy Spirit, would you show me where the lack is in my life? Doesn't matter if we're five years old or 95 years old. God, where's the lack? Where have I become even complacent in areas that I know that you desire for me to grow? That are keeping me, hindering me from fullness in this area. God, where is it in my life that's keeping me from fullness in my workplace? Oh, well, that's my, that's my boss. See, here's the, here's the thing about the void. Oftentimes, the void keeps us from being creative, and it causes us to become critical. And so what we do is when we become critical about the void, now there's blame. And so when there's blame, now we never can get out of the rut of where we are because we've taken the responsibility off of ourselves, and we put it on someone or something else. And so, God, where is it in my life? There's a void, a lack in me, not in someone else and not in what they're doing, not in what they're saying. God, where's the lack in me? And God, now give me creative uh, ideas, Holy Spirit, to help me put into work the processes that you have for me because I desire at the end of 2024 to say, man, it's good. Man, it's so good. Can I tell you, God doesn't want you to get to the end of 2024 and say, man, this is terrible. I'm not saying life's gonna be perfect. That's not where God leads us. He doesn't lead us to perfection. That's not what I'm saying. He leads us to life and life more abundantly, meaning even in the circumstances. I'm not walking by sight in what I see. I'm walking by faith because I know I have a God that is leading me whose ways are higher and greater than my own. And so, it's good. As we start 2024, as we start this 21 days of prayer and fasting, can I challenge you and encourage you? Let us be ones that seek God's vision this year. Let's forget our own ways. What if for one year, one year, we just said, forget what I want. What if for one year, we just said it, what I want does not matter. And let me tell you, if it doesn't work, if you put it in God's hands, then 2025, I'll be the first ones to put it back in your hands and say, go and do. But what if for one year, we say, God, the relationships are yours. The marriage is yours. My pride is yours. My ego is yours. My workplace is yours. What if for one year we said, God, your vision, not mine. God, your ways, not mine. God, your thoughts, not mine. Can I encourage you? I believe if we did, the end of 2024, man, this is good. Because that's where he leads. He leads us to life and life more abundantly. Amen. Would you stand with me as we close in prayer today? God, I thank you so much.